And now I want to talk a little bit about central forces. We've said that if we're going to have circular motion, specifically uniform circular motion, we have to have a centripetal acceleration. That was chapter four. Because we have an acceleration towards the center of the circle, our net force must be towards the center of the circle. So as your particle moves in the circle, that force needs to always be radial. That force needs to always be pointing in. So what we are dealing with here is a situation that we call central forces. I'll give you the definition from the book. It is a force that is always directed towards the same point. Now there's something that's a little special about this in that we call it central forces, but then the definition is a force that is always directed towards the same point. Be careful in that it isn't actually true that, this, that the force has to be pointed towards the center, that in this case we're defining it from the agent's point of view, not the object's point of view. So the agent's point of view is that I, you know, if, if I am the agent, I am pulling things towards me with maybe literally a tension or maybe a gravitational force or something else, and I am pulling equal strength in all direction. So that force always pulls towards me. On the other hand, if someone happens to be going in a circle and they are the object and me, the agent, is not in the cent center of it, well, it's still true that my pulling force is always directed towards the same point. So again, it's a subtle distinction and it won't matter for what we do in here, but if you've studied any astronomy or astrophysics and you know about elliptical orbits, even though you don't have a pure center of the ellipse per se, you still have a central force. So that's important. So some examples. First one is gravity. And this will be important for a later section when we talk about circular orbits. Gravity is a great central force, always points towards the center. A second one is uh, the Coulombic attractive force, and this has to do with charges. So we study this in the second semester of physics. We won't really talk about it very much right now, but the attractive force for charges is also a central force. Now then there are three forces that I've listed here that can be central forces. They are not central forces in every single situation, but depending on how you set up the geometry of the situation, you may or may not get a central force. So that would be tension for just the tension of a rope or string, the frictional force, and the normal force. And I'm going to show you some examples of when this might happen, but the important thing is that if you have circular motion, there's probably some sort of central force at play, um, but it might be one of these three very normal for uh, very not normal, but very regular forces, um, and these two we'll see sometimes. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Or oops, sorry, there's a model. So any time that I show this model box, it's because this is a simplification that we are using, and we are using a very specific uh, model here. So in this case we are talking about a central force with a constant r. What does it mean for this to be a constant r? This means that we have a circle. And again, central forces can arise in a situation where you don't have a circle, or I guess vice versa. You can have central forces and you might not have a circle, but that's going to be much harder to calculate. So in intro physics, we are concerned with central forces in circles. So the object is going to be a particle. That's our normal model. And then we are going to have a centripetal acceleration towards the center. So normally this is going to be uniform circular motion and specifically the central force is responsible for uniform circular motion. If we have non-uniform circular motion, there are other forces to worry about. And in this case, we have a central force, which is our net force. Again, we might have for instance, in the previous case of the person uh, making the child go around in a circle in a cart, there were normal and gravitational forces, but the only forces in our radial direction was the tension. So again, the net force here, we're talking about that central force, and if it's, it could potentially be more than one object giving you that force, but usually the central force is just due to one object, or sorry, one force in the radial direction. So this is a model, which means that you must identify when it is not valid to use it. When does it fail? Well, if we have a tangential component, which will be non-uniform circular motion, or if your radius changes. 
So there's going to be a lot of situations where you're doing the calculation, assuming that something's staying, say, in the same place on the cone, or what is true for this to not fall. And that's because it is possible to calculate it in a situation where the radius is changing, but then we can't actually use this model. And that very quickly becomes very complicated. So to use this central force model, we are assuming the radius is staying constant, that we have a circle and not a spiral or an ellipse. So here is an example of tension as a central force. And I really love this problem. And the idea of this problem is that you have a hockey puck on a frictionless surface that is going in a circle, and there is a rope attached to it, or a massless string, we would use the ideal string model, that goes over and through a hole, and hanging straight down is a different mass. And the question is to calculate the tension in the rope, or a d different variation on it is to calculate the radius given the masses, or a different variation is to calculate one of the masses given the radius and the other. So there's a lot of different things you can calculate, but there's basically a fixed relationship between the radius and these masses, assuming that this radius is fixed. So what you should think about here is that tension in an ideal string is uniform everywhere, and it means that both ends of the string have tension, right? Both of the ends of the string are pulling. So the tension is keeping mass one in a circle and it is keeping mass two from falling. If mass two wasn't there, then mass one would go in a straight line. You wouldn't have a central force. If mass one wasn't there, the mass two would just accelerate downwards. So I really like this calculation, and it's one example where you have a central force due to tension, and we don't have any other forces in the radial direction. You would have gravity down on M1, but you have normal force up. Um, so that is nice and simple. Note that if there was friction, this would not be a uniform circular motion problem because your friction is going to be anti-parallel to the instantaneous velocity vector. And we said that uniform circular motion meant you have no net force in the tangential direction. So another example, another problem I really like, is normal force being your central force. And in this situation, you have a little marble that is spinning on the inside of a funnel. There's only two forces here, the gravitational force and the normal force. Now, this is, I, and again, I love this problem. So you have your particle, right? And so if I consider the point where it's here on the edge, the, the book showing it off more towards us, but that's hard to draw then it's basically on a ramp. So I have my normal force perpendicular to the ramp, and I have my gravitational force down. So what you should think about here is, again, that, that coordinate system. So my radial direction is here. My tangential direction is, say, into the page, based on how these arrows are going. So my tangential direction is into the page. And so my z direction is, say, up. So z is up. You see that my gravitational force and my normal force have to cancel. Sorry, the components in z cancel for this to be uniform circular motion. But there's a component of the normal force that is in the radial direction. So the only reason this is spinning in a circle is because of the normal force. Now something, again, a couple of things that might trip you up here. If there's any friction, this won't work. So this has to be a frictionless situation. Second, it has to initially be going in a circle. There was some initial velocity that it was given. If you just place a marble on a funnel, clearly it just rolls down the funnel. But if you think about giving it an initial circular velocity, this could work. Now, something here is to not just assume that the gravitational and normal force is balanced. There is a certain canceling that is happening here of your z component, but it doesn't have to be true. And that's one of the things that I like about this. So in the case where our model applies, and it's a central force with fixed r, that means it can't be going up the funnel or down the funnel it just it can't be because then your radius would be changing right because your radius here is given based on where it is in the funnel so the only way 
that we can have use our model is if it's not going up or down the funnel. Why would it be going up or down the funnel? So one thing you might be able to think through, if you've ever done this, or just can think through the physics, if I take a marble and I have some sort of funnel and I try to spin my funnel, the marble might actually fly out. It might go up the funnel and out. Why would that be? What could make it go up the funnel? If we look at our free body diagram, the normal force goes up and in. So if I try to make it have too much centripetal acceleration, like if I'm making it go uh, in this circle too fast, well, that means my normal force is really big to actually have a bigger net force towards the center. But since my gravitational force is fixed and the angle of my normal force is fixed, if it tries to go too fast in a circle, because the normal force is really big, that means it's also going to go up and out of the circle. So we're not going to calculate that because that breaks our central force with a fixed arm model. But it's really interesting to think through these situations where you might have something sliding up or down your cone and how that actually relates to your central force.